Thank you so much for inviting me to share a few words today. I am so grateful to join such dedicated leaders in the fight to protect our environment while prioritizing our ports. Eric Pika, Terrence Bankston, and my colleagues, Representative Nikema Williams, and Caucus Chair Pete Aguilar, thank you all for your work. It is so great to be able to join you here today. For decades, Friends of the Earth has led the fight to envision a better, brighter, greener, and more sustainable future. And let me tell you, as someone deep in this work on Capitol Hill, your efforts to envision the future and sow the seeds of change is necessary and it is working. The work that this movement began decades ago to save our planet and fight for green infrastructure is bearing fruit. Yes, there are many challenges ahead of us, but we have accomplished many great things together, and I know that there are so many more achievements yet to come. I want to start by focusing on the historic $369 billion investment that Democrats made in climate and environmental protection just last year in the Inflation Reduction Act. If I had stood before you 10 years ago and told you that the United States government would invest hundreds of billions of dollars into fighting climate change with electric vehicles, solar energy, onshore and offshore wind, it was bad enough at that time that you may have thought I was just dreaming. But we did it. We allocated $3 billion for clean port investments to ensure that zero emission equipment can be used, working to guarantee that communities like mine in Seattle can breathe clean air. And that's just in the Inflation Reduction Act. Our infrastructure law included more than $6.5 billion in funding for our ports to update infrastructure and reduce truck emissions at ports. And it's important to recognize how we did it. Over the last several years, climate champions inside and outside of Congress have built much more diverse coalitions, organized and pushed for big, bold ideas. Our successes happened because the climate justice movement never gave up hope when Congress took little to no action on climate for decades. We stayed strong, we demanded action, and at the end of the day, we helped spur clean energy growth and we will reduce greenhouse gas emissions by about one gigaton in 2030, or a billion metric tons, or 10 times more climate impact than any other single piece of legislation ever enacted. And it's not just Congress leading this charge. For the first time in our country's history, the federal government led by President Biden and his administration has taken steps to prioritize environmental justice. The Justice 40 initiative requires that 40% of all federal investments into climate change, clean energy, and more go to disadvantaged communities that have been historically overburdened at, by pollution and left out of the tables. But all of us in this room know that the administration can go farther, especially now that Congress is divided. That's why as chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus, I worked with our 103 members to put together a list of executive actions that we believe the administration has both the authority to take and should continue to take to move our country in the right direction. A major one that is a top priority for me is having the EPA regulate hazardous air pollutants under the Clean Air Act, including soot. There is no question how dangerous air pollution is and the outsized impact that it has on already disadvantaged communities, often black, brown, indigenous, and poor communities. Yes, there is more to be done, but in every election, we see more people voting than ever before. Young people, black, brown, indigenous, poor, women, LGBTQ+, all coming to the table and recognizing that when we organize, when we push hard, we win. Even as wildfires rage, as big oil pours billions into elections, as these fights are more urgent and feel more difficult, we as organizers know that we will not give up. Together, we push the boundaries of what is possible to include bold climate action that centers environmental justice, and we will continue to do so, empowered by the unprecedented victories that we have reached in the past years. So thank you for having me here today, but most of all, thank you for continuing to push those boundaries together into the future and for recognizing that our power is in building these bigger, more diverse coalitions that organize to win 
together for our future.